While being exceedingly busy lately, I'm just kind of coming out of things and I, I quickly fell down this, this rabbit hole. And while I should be getting back to firmware and updating people and stuff like that, I, I went down a rabbit hole deeply, but not for a, a really sensible reason. Maybe it'll pan out, maybe it won't, but basically I went down a rabbit hole related to all of these little guys. What I mean by that is switches. Um, this is a Cherry MX Red computer key switch. These are what are called tack switches, tactile switches. It's a little itty bitty one. And it all kind of revolves around the feel. What, what makes a good switch? I think today, I mean, we can, we're look at it in the context of one of these. This is a Campagnolo electronic shifter. It just happened to be the one that next to my desk, um, the spear that I have. I have some SRAM, I have some Shimano mechanical ones in a closet. And these use some variation of the technologies found in these that are just effectively dome switches to give you feedback when you press the buttons. So what I really wanted to know is how they feel. Hey, just, just tell me how you feel. Just, you know, if you're not gonna, if you, if you don't tell me, I, I'm never going to know. Going to have to have to change the settings on the reality distortion field here. We're currently set on 100%-ish objective. That, that's where she maxes out. We're gonna have to turn that a bit down to this subjective reality and about halfway should should cut it for us. Now keep in mind that most cycling advertisements and most cycling discussions tend to exist down here in this area. So looking at the competitors, over molded rubber here, just completely over the buttons. And when you push on them, there's not much feel, not much sound either, nothing, but they are waterproof. These ones down here, not much feel, but probably over molded underneath. So that's that one. Their new generation, the 530, what have we got? Well, we've got plastic buttons and they all have these little symbols on them for sort of what they do, but it's not like you can feel them. And you can also see how those changes continued even onto the ingress for the protection. It's now plastic and over molded instead of just rubber by itself. What about the buttons? We now have some sound and very minimal tactile feel. They don't feel nearly as mushy as the, the 530 did. But let's look at something different. This is the Hammerhead Carew. It's a much physically larger cycle computer. And to get access to see what's going on, we have to open it up here. Actually before that, So lots of sound, lots of tactile feedback. So how did they do it? Well, they first start off with physical buttons and a kind of guide in the shell. They have this rubber spring retainer. So you push in, it gives a little bit of extra feedback back. And you know, if you're like me, you get it caught. But it's also got over molded elements to keep it uh, waterproof but it's got a lot of tactile clicking and feedback there so that's that's a much better button so as you can see here we've got a shimano this is an r8000 so road 8000 series <clears throat> this is a hydraulic group set this is a mechanical group set so the campagnolo Weaver travels with. So all the mechanism for this is all kind of contained here. It all pivots at the same point. So when I press this, the mechanism is actually up here. When I press this, it's actually the button 
is actually right here. So what's happening is very different. So when you press this, they both move. Um, but you can see this is a flimsy thing. This has a lot of, of force. So this is what I'm talking about. But this tack switch is in here. There, this is not touching it. This is just floating around. This is just a flimsy little lever that's pivoting up here. So there's no engagement. It, it, it moves smoothly and then... So move, lock, touch. And when you press it, I mean, I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna hold a mic, see if I can get better audio. So you got all this flimsy stuff into a tack switch that lives behind here. So there's going to be a couple of things different about the Campagnolo a little bit. One is that switch that's inside is never fully disengaged. So while the Shimano has is a spring until it touches the top of the switch, so switch, touch, click, the Campagnolo one has a spring that as you do, it keeps applying more and more force and then pushes through. So you get a cleaner, a more mature feel. So you keep pushing and you feel the click. There is no abrupt, it just ramps up. And the thumb is a little lever that's directly on the multi-dome. Whereas they use a, the Shimano, they use the same kind of gap, touch. It's gap, touch, push, click. So the Campagnolo system has a lot more refinement. This is their first generation of this. The 12 speed is very similar. Almost no real uh, change in that mechanism, but you can see that like, they kind of got it right. They kind of got the feel, but Whereas Shimano, what we just saw is a third iteration, the third generation of Shimano. It, this, uh, from the 6800 9000 series to this, they adjusted and changed and, and did a whole bunch of stuff for feel, and it still feels a bit cheap and chintzy. The Campagnolo one feels really good, except if you're like me, you keep rotating your hand outward like this and twisting it, and then the hood will bunch under the thumb and it causes the thumb to get mushy. You just have to kind of re-wrench and try and get everything to seat back in properly. Let's just quickly look at keyboards as an example. So maybe someone you know or you are interested in mechanical keyboards. And mechanical refers to that there are individually module key switches. Uh, and they, they allow you to you can choose different key switches. So you can choose linear or tactile or clicky. You can choose the different forces. You can choose the brands. You can choose uh, different stems and caps. So there's all sorts of variations, but basically it's linear. They just linear force, bottom out, tactile. There's like a little feel of a bump and clicky. Feel a bump, but you hear a sound. I like the ones where you feel a bump and you hear the sound for typing and those linear ones if you just want to do something like a, a video game. Those linear ones are kind of closer to the mushy membrane keyboards that are found in laptops. But it's kind of been generally recognized that most people like one of those three variations of the mechanical feel and typists tend to like tactile or clicky. And this, you can look them up. There's some variation of this is your force versus displacement curve. Effectively, they have a spring that's preloaded. So you have to get over that preload and there's usually a little bit of movement and ideally it should be none, vertical, but you get over that preload and because of some of the internal mechanisms with the, the switch part, the me electromechanical switch part, um, it changes the shape. So normally this dotted line would be, you know, your linear spring. This changes the shape. So you keep pushing, you push more and more force until you get to the trip over point and then it drops. And then it follows along the spring force more or less until it bottoms out. So push, 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 click. 
The force drops, you can keep going, bottoms out. So we just went through, you just saw what a Shimano shifter looks like and how it, it kind of moves a little mushy and then it engages near the bottom of the stroke and how Campagnolo doesn't do that. And unfortunately, there's, this is not philo vision. So I'm gonna try and explain what's going on. So if you turn these mechanisms into simple buttons, this is exactly what's going on. This is on the edge of a lever or some fixture like that. But basically it's a button that has a stop. So you can preload the spring, spring runs down, lands on the circuit board or some other fixture. So there's a constant preload force here. And then as, as you press, the force increases. So preload, force increases. But there's a gap between this cheap off the shelf tack switch and you can choose the force and vaguely the travel. Um, but there's a gap and that leads to the, the mushy, sloshy, springy, and it's a weak spring feel before it lands. So you get down to this and then you land. And then once you land, you have to keep going. You get this very abrupt increase in force and then drops and then continues on linearly because the little gap, but it bottom up pretty quickly and you get, you can't no more travel. So you essentially have a, a gap, push down, touches, click. And if they increase the force on that, most people will just run into it and not press it. If they decrease the force on it, yeah, it's not that big a deal. And that's how they get away with a very low force tact switch. So that movement prevents the accidental trip over. Whereas with Campagnolo, you have something different. You have a lot of the same elements. You have this, the button piece. And imagine this is actually for the lever, but if it's converted to a button, you have a button element, you have the same spring, but it's now pushing on a plunger that is pushing on the domes of the tack switch. Now, why is it pushing on the domes and not some sort of mechanical element above it? Because they have to stack them. Why do they have to stack them? Because they're going to need a lot more force. So this is additive if it was here. If we put it over here, this would have to lower it down and it would be very mushy, sloshy, you know, static friction could stop it from returning. So they want a higher force. So they stack the domes and that give, allows you to have effectively multiple tech switches in a row. So instead of topping out at three or 400 grams of force, they get to top out at one kilo or 1500 grams or 2000 grams of force. So they have that same preload. You have to get over that a little bit of movement, but effectively ideal would be none. Get over that a little bit. It's linear, linear, linear. And it's always, it's, that force is translating directly to those domes and it requires a lot of force, but we're on a lever mechanism. So it keeps going up and up and up, trips over, domes collapse, activates the button and force ramps up really quickly because it bottomed out. So you push and push and push, and push, and click. And event, it's around the same point at which it w the spring will bottom out trips over. So you get this constant force, click. Whereas Shimano, you get soft, 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 hard, click. So constant force, click. Soft, 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 hard, click. This adds this whole element out here. Very mushy, very cheap. This is very solid, very premium. Shimano and SRAM does this for their uh, paddles, the two sort of paddles on Shimano, the one for SRAM. Campagnolo does this on their, their depending on what you, you look at, but the, the one you use your fingers on. The thumb, however, does something else. And they could have put, probably worked in this mechanism, but this is a complicated mechanism. And for them, they're probably more trying to replicate their ultra shift which is a very high force, but very quick. So it made sense that they didn't. However, by using multi-dome, you essentially change that trip over point. The displacement stays the same, but that trip over point changes. So you can steepen the curve 
or you can lower the curve by adjusting it. So what they did was they steepened the curve very high by having multiple domes, and then they put a lever mechanism. So the multi-dome is activated here. It's levering and pushes down. So you're pushing out here, pushes down on the domes here. That doubles the distance or triples the distance, depending on whatever size lever you use. You could theoretically make it really long. So they, that distance doesn't change, but that height does. So what they did was they made it steep, but then they lengthened that whole distance. So they couldn't move this trip point very much. You can do that with dome geometry, but by using the lever, they were able to lengthen it. And it's not the same as this, but it's very close. It doesn't have any of that mushy element. And it just goes straight up to that trips over, goes down, bottoms out. So it bottoms out quicker than this could. You can tune this so that the spring could keep compressing, but then that would add to some mushiness. You want it to bottom out just after it. And that's what they did for the lever. For the mode buttons, that's the simplest variation. It's just generally tuned based on feel. So now you don't have a lever element. You're just pushing directly on it. And if you push directly on attack buttons, yeah, that's great. But a lot of them have very, very, very low force. So you can't, I mean, even the, the highest ones don't have much force behind them or force to, to trip them. So with multi-dome, you can stack them up so there's less accidental button presses. You can tune the sound, the tonality of it. Um, these, it's, you can't do that. It's, it's brand by brand. Um, you don't have as much control of that. If you have, if you have one with waterproofing, as I found, it dampens the sound. So you get weird effects and at best you can choose brand or within a category of two or three forces, you then usually don't have options on displacement. But with domes, there are so many domes and you can do so many things like stacking domes. You could theoretically stack dissimilar domes so long as they're like the same shape. So you could stack a 400 and a 500 gram of the same shape, which is thickness. So you can tune it very precisely that way. So that's what they did. So basically all this kind of comes down to is my understanding throughout all this experimentation is the premium feels comes from several areas. One is consistency. Is this consistent? Yes. Is this consistent? Yes. Is this consistent? No, it is not. Is this consistent? Yes. And these are actually much similar, much more similar than you'd actually think, even though the distance traveled is very short. Again, if, if they had expected a full lever throw, Linus drop tips. If they had expected a full lever throw, that they may have done something different. They may have incorporated this arrangement, but this basically, in my opinion, is a cost engineering exercise. This with all its finickiness is premium. In the second part of this, we're going to translate all of those subjective things into a measurable subjective method in order to actually choose a better switch. So with that, thanks for watching.